Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. So in this video, we'll be solving some more questions related to arrays and vectors. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first question that we have here is leaders in an array. So what does the problem state? So we'll be given integer array nums and we have to find leaders in a given array. So what do you mean by leaders? An element of an array is a leader if it is greater than or equal to all the elements to its right. So in the given array, can I say 17 is a leader? Yes, it is a leader because it is greater than all the elements to its right. Can I say 4 is a leader? No, because 4 is not greater than all the elements to its right. Can I say 5 is a leader? Yes, it is a leader because it is greater than all the elements to its right. Can I say 2 is a leader? Yes, because there are no elements to the right side of the 2. Therefore, 2 is a leader. So, how can we solve this question? So, the key observations from the above example are that the last element of the array will always be a leader as there are no elements to the right side of the last element. And for the element to be a leader, it has to be greater than all the elements to its right. So let's try to solve this question. So the extreme brute force that is coming to my mind to solve this question is like for every element, we'll try to see whether it is greater than or equal to all the elements to its right. If it is greater than or equal to all the elements to its right, then yes, it is a leader. If it is not greater than or equal to all the elements to its right, then no, it is not a leader. So let's dry run this for the given example. Suppose I am at 16 and for 16, I am checking every element to its right. So the first element is the 17. Is 16 greater than 17? No, it is not. So, do we need to check further if 16 is a leader? No, there is no need to check further in the array as 16 is not greater than 17 and from here only we can tell that 16 is a not a leader. So, we'll move to the next element. So, our next element is a 17. For 17, we'll check all the elements to its right. As you can see, 17 is greater than all the elements to its right. So 17 is a leader. So the next element is a 4. As you can see, 4 is less than 5, which is to the right side of the 4. So 4 is not a leader. So we'll move to the next element. Our next element is a 3. So as you can see, 3 is less than 5, which is right side of the 3. So 3 is not a leader. So we'll move to the next element. So our next element is 5. As you can see, there is only one element to the right side of the 5, which is 2. And 5 is definitely greater than 2. So therefore, 5 is a leader. And we'll move to the next element, which is the last element of the array, which is nothing but 2. As you can see, there are no elements to the right side of the 2. So definitely, 2 is the leader. So from the above array, the 17, 5 and 2 are the leaders in the array. So let's try to see pseudocode for this approach. So for every element, we need to check all the elements to its right to check whether my given element is leader or not. So for that, we'll require one for loop. So for int i equals to zero till my i is less than n, and I'll keep on incrementing i. So we'll take a Boolean variable temporary which will be helpful for us to check whether my current element is a leader or not so let's take a variable bool temporary which will be initially equal to true then we'll iterate over each and every element to the right side of the current element so we'll require another for loop so for int j equals to i plus 1 till my j is less than n and I'll keep on incrementing my j and we'll check if my current element is greater than the element to its right. So if it is greater, 
so we'll simply move to the next element to the right side of the current element and if my current element if it is less than the element to its right then we need not check further right elements so we'll simply break out of the for loop and we'll move to the next element so we'll check if my nums of i if it is less than my nums of j which means our current element is less than the element to its right then we'll set our temporary to false which will be helpful for us to know whether our current element is leader or not so in this case it is not a leader and we'll simply break out of the inner for loop now as we have broken out of the inner for loop so we'll move to the next element so in case if our current element if it is greater than all the element to its right then it is a leader in the array and we need to store that element so for storing the leaders in the array we will require one vector so let's take vector of integer name answer so we'll store all the elements inside our answer vector so we'll check if our temp variable if it is equals to true that means our current element is a leader then in that case we'll store our current element into our answer vector so answer dot pushback nums of i so it will be storing our current element so that was the code to find leaders in the array so let's try to analyze time complexity and space complexity for this approach so as you can see we are iterating over our array so the outer for loop will be taking us big o of n and the inner for loop in which we are iterating over all the elements to the right side of the current element so that would be something near about big of n it is not exactly the big of n uh, but it is something close to the big of n in hypothetical conditions so that would be the big of n so the overall time complexity for this approach will be big o of n square and what about the space complexity so as we are not using any extra space so our space complexity will be big o of 1 so that was the brute force approach to solve this question so can we optimize this approach so if we can get rid of the extra time that we are using for iterating over our current array so we can easily optimize this approach for this question we are not having any better approach so let's dive into the optimal solution so as we have to find the leaders in the array and leaders are the element which are greater than all the element to its right so for example 17 is a leader because it is greater than all the elements to its right so can we observe something so what is the largest element to the right side of the 17 it is nothing but 5 is my 17 greater than the 5 yes it is greater than 17 that means if my 17 if it is greater than the largest element to its right then it is greater than all the elements to its right so we can simply compare our current element to the largest element to its right if our current element if it is greater than the largest element to its right then it is greater than all the elements to its right so in this case the 17 is greater than 5 it means that it is greater than 4 it is greater than 3 and it is greater than 2 and it is pretty obvious so with the help of this approach we can easily find if our current element is a leader in the array or not so let's try to dry run this solution for the given example so we'll take a variable name maximum which will be storing the maximum value from the right till now so initially my maximum will be equal to int min now let's start iterating from the right side of the array so my current element is a 2 if it is greater than my maximum yes it is greater than my maximum so we'll update our maximum to 2 and we'll store 
to in our answer array and we'll move to the next element so our next element is a 5 is it greater than our maximum yes it is so we'll update our maximum to 5 and we'll store 5 into our answer array so let's go to the next element our next element is a 3 is 3 greater than 5 no it is not so we'll simply move to the next element our next element is 4 is 4 greater than the 5 no 4 is not greater than 5 it means it is not leader in the array as it is not greater than the maximum element to its right so we'll simply move to the next element so our next element is 17 is my 17 greater than maximum yes 17 is greater than maximum so we'll update our maximum to 17 and we'll store 17 into our answer array as it is a leader so we'll move to the next element our next element is a 16 is 16 greater than our maximum no it is not so we'll move to the next element and as we are moving out of the boundary of the array so we'll stop iterating and finally after completion of iteration we have our answer which is nothing but leaders in our array so let's try to see pseudocode for this approach so what we are doing so we are simply iterating over our array from right side and we are taking maximum from right side till now so we'll take a variable maximum which is initialized to int min as of now and we'll start iterating over array from right side of the array so for int i equals to n minus 1 till my i is greater than or equal to 0 and i'll keep on decrementing my i i'll check if my current element if it is greater than my maximum or if it is equal to my maximum then we'll update our maximum as our current element and we'll store our current element into our answer so answer dot pushback nums of i and we'll simply move to the next element and at the end of iteration our answer array will be containing all the leaders in the array so that was the pseudocode for this approach so let's try to analyze time complexity and space complexity for this approach so as we are iterating over our array so this for loop will be taking us big of n time complexity so the overall time complexity for this approach is nothing but big of n and what about the space complexity so as we are not using any extra space so my space complexity will be big o of one so that was the optimal approach to solve this question so let's code this we'll require a variable maximum which will be initially equal to the int min now as we need to iterate over our array from right side so we'll require a for loop for int i equals to n minus 1 till my i is greater than or equal to 0 and i'll keep on decrementing my i now we'll check if our current element if it is greater than our maximum so if a of i if it is greater than or equal to our maximum then we'll update our maximum as a of i and we'll store it into our answer vector so for that we'll declare one answer vector so vector int answer and we'll push our current element into our answer as it is leader so answer dot push back a of i and we'll move to the next element if our current element if it is not greater than our maximum so it will be not pushed into our answer vector and we'll simply move to the next element and at the end of iteration our answer vector will be containing all the leaders in our array so let's try to observe something so as you can see in case of this example our answer vector was storing leaders from right side of the array which is nothing but 2 5 and 70 but we need our leaders in our answer vector 
from the left side of the array. So we need to reverse our answer vector while we are returning our answer in our solution. So before returning our answer vector, we need to reverse our answer vector. So let's try to reverse it. So reverse answer dot begin comma answer dot end. So this will reverse our answer vector and at the end we'll simply return our answer. So let's try to compile this. So as you can see, it is successfully compiled. So let's now try submitting this. And it has successfully passed all the test cases. So that was it about this question. So the next question that we have here is maximum subarray sub. So what does the problem state? So we'll be given integer array nums and we have to find the subarray with the maximum sub. So what do you mean by subarray? So subarray is contiguous part of the array. So from the given array, minus 3 and 4 is one of the subarrays. Minus 1, 2, 1, minus 5 is one of the subarray. The single element 4 is also subarray. And the given complete array nums is also a subarray. So let's try to solve this question. So as we have to find the subarray with the maximum sum, so the brute force will be generating all the possible subarrays and finding out which subarray has the maximum sum. So let's try to observe something. So minus two is one subarray, minus two, one is just one subarray, minus two, one and minus three is one of the subarrays, minus two, one, minus three and four is one of the subarrays minus 2 1 minus 3 4 minus 1 is one of the subarrays minus 2 1 minus 3 4 minus 1 minus 2 is one of the subarrays so as you can see every time our subarray is increasing by one element let's now observe this for element 1 so element 1 is one of the subarrays then 1 minus 3 is one of the subarrays 1 minus 3 4 is one of the subarrays 1 minus 3 4 minus 1 is one of the subarrays 1 minus 3 4 minus 1 2 is one of the subarrays 1 minus 3 4 minus 1 2 1 is one of the subarrays and as you can see so each time we are iterating over next element and subarray is increasing by one element so we can use this to generate all the possible subarrays so let's try to see this so as we are iterating over array to generate the all possible subarrays and we have to find the subarray with the maximum sum so we'll take a variable sum which will be initially equals to the minimum number which can be so it will be equals to int min then we are iterating over the complete array and for each element we are generating all possible subarrays so we are iterating over an array and for every element we are generating all possible subarrays so we will require a for loop for iterating purpose so for int i equals to 0 till my i is less than n and i plus plus then as we have seen previously so every time if I am standing at minus 2, so my next subarray will be minus 2, 1, then the next subarray will be minus 2, 1, and minus 3, then the next subarray will be minus 2, 1, minus 3, and 4. So as you can see, every time a new element is getting added into our subarray, and it is starting right from the current element. So our next for loop will be starting from the current element, and it will go up till the last element of the array. So the inner for loop will be for in j equals to i till my j is less than n and I'll keep on incrementing my j. So as we have to find the sum of the subarray. So as of now, if I'm standing at i and I'm going till the j. So if my j is starting from i, so currently the sum of my first subarray will be minus 2, then my j will be here, then my sum of the subarray will be from i to j, 
then my j will increment then my sub of the sub array will be from i to j so every time to find the sum of the sub array we have to iterate from i till the j so we'll require another for loop to find sum of the sub array so we'll initialize one variable name as current sum equal to zero so int current sum equal to zero and we'll iterate from i to j so for in k equals to i till my k is less than or equal to j and i'll keep on incrementing my k so now i'll add element at index k into my current sum so current sum plus equals to num sub k now after adding all the elements from the current sub array into our current sum so we'll see if our current sum of the sub array if it is greater than our sum if it is greater so we'll initialize our sum to current sum so now if the current sum if it is greater than our sum then we'll initialize our sum to current sum and this will complete our code so at the end our sum will be holding the maximum sum of the sub array and we'll simply return that so let's try to analyze time complexity and space complexity for this so the time complexity for this will be simply big o of n cube so as we are using a three for loop so it will be big of n cube so it will be not exactly equals to big of n cube but it is something near about big of n cube and what about the space complexity so as we are not using any extra space so my space complexity will be big of one so that was the brute force approach to solve this question so can we optimize this brute force so here we are using an extra for loop to find the sum of the sub array so if we can get rid of this extra for loop so we can easily optimize this approach so let's try and observe something so here as you can see if i'm currently starting from element at index 0 which is nothing but minus 2 so the first sub array will be minus 2 the next sub array will be minus 2 comma 1 the next sub array will be minus 2 1 minus 3 the next sub array will be minus 2 1 minus 3 and 4 the next sub array will be minus 2 1 minus 3 4 and minus 1 the next sub array will be minus 2 1 minus 3 4 minus 1 and 2 so as you can see every time a new element is getting added into our sub array so currently if my sub array is minus 2 and my sum of the current sub array will be minus 2 the next time my sub array will be minus 2 comma 1 so uh, the element 1 is getting added into my sub array so do we really need to start iterating from minus 2 to find our sum of the sub array so here it is not required as you can see the sum of my previous sub array was minus 2 and my current sub array is minus 2 comma 1 so if i can directly add my current element into my current sum of the sub array so i can easily get the sum of current sub array so it will be equal to minus 2 plus 1 which is nothing but equals to minus 1 which is sum of my current sub array so the next element is minus 3 so to find the sum of the given sub array so do i really need to start iterating from minus 2 my answer is no so we can easily find the sum of the given sub array by adding the current element which is nothing but minus 3 into my previous sum so my previous sum was minus 1 i can add minus 3 into my minus 1 so it will be giving me sum of minus 4 which is the sum of my current sub array and in this way we can easily find the sum of the current sub array by adding the current element into the previous sum so we can get rid of the for loop that we are using to find the sum of the sub array so let's try to write the code for this we'll initialize our current sum variable to zero inside our first for loop and then 
at every point we are just adding our current element into current sum to find the sum of the current sub array so my current sum will be equal to current sum plus equals to nums of 5 so this will be giving me the sum of the current sub array and then we'll compare our current sum with the sum if it is greater than the sum then we'll reinitialize our sum as the current sum and at the end of that iteration our sum will be containing the maximum sum sub array so that was the slight optimization to the brute force approach so let's try to analyze the time complexity for this so the time complexity for this approach will be big of n square so as we are using to for loop so it will be big of n square and what about the space complexity so as we are not using any extra space so my space complexity will be big of one so that was the better approach to solve this question so let's see the optimal approach to solve this question so our optimal approach will be based on the cadence algorithm so to solve this question we'll initialize our sum to zero and we'll require a variable name maxim which will be initially equal to the minimum value so my maxim will be equal to int min so in this approach we'll try to find the maximum sum sub array while we are iterating over the array so let's start iterating over the array so i'm currently at the first element which is nothing but minus two so i'll add the current element into my sum variable so my sum will be updated to minus two so i'll see if my sum if it is greater than our maximum sum yes it is greater than our maximum sum so our maximum sum will be get updated to minus two then we'll move ahead so before moving ahead if you can observe if i move ahead so my next element will be one and if i add our next element into our current sum so my current sum will be minus one so if we are carrying our sum which is nothing but minus two so if we are carrying this ahead so it will be reducing our sum so in this case my sum will be equal to minus two plus one which is nothing but minus one if i am carrying this negative sum as i am moving ahead and if i am not carrying this negative sum as i am moving ahead so my current sum will be only the sum of my current element which is which is which is nothing but one so in this case if i am not taking my negative sum ahead as i am moving ahead so my sum will be definitely greater than my previous sum so this is the key technique in this algorithm so if our current sum if it is negative so we would be not carrying this ahead as we are moving because it will be definitely reducing our sum instead of this we'll reinitialize our sum to zero as we are moving ahead so in this case i am reinitializing my sum to zero and i'll move ahead so my next element is one so i'll add my element to sum so my sum will be updated to one is my sum greater than my maximum sum yes it is greater than my maximum sum so i'll update my maximum sum to one and i'll simply move ahead so our next element is a minus three as our sum is positive so we'll add our next element to our sum so our sum will get updated to minus two is our sum greater than our maximum sum no it is not so before moving ahead we will check if our sum is negative in this case it is negative so we'll reinitialize it to zero then we'll move ahead our next element is a four so we'll add the next element into our sum so our sum will be equals to four we'll check if our sum is it greater than maximum sum in this case it is greater than maximum sum so we'll update our maximum sum to four then we'll move ahead to the next element so before moving ahead to the next element as you can see our current sum is a positive so we can add our next element to our current sum so our current sum will get updated as three is three greater than our maximum sum no it is not so we'll simply move ahead so our next element is a two so we'll add it to our current sum so our current sum will get updated to five is above five 
greater than our maximum sum yes it is so i'll update our maximum sum to 5 and we'll move it so our next element is 1 so i'll add next element to our current sum and it will be get updated to 6 is our current sum greater than our maximum sum yes it is so we'll update our maximum sum to 6 and we'll move it so our next element is a minus 5 so we'll add it to our current sum so our current sum will get updated to minus 1 is minus 1 greater than our maximum sum no it is not so we'll move ahead so before moving ahead as our sum is negative so we'll reinitialize it to 0 and we'll move ahead so we'll add our next element to our sum so our sum will get updated to 4 is our current sum greater than our maximum sum no it is not so we'll simply move ahead and in this case we'll move out of the boundary of the array and we'll stop iterating so as you can see our variable maximum sum is containing the maximum sum of the sub array which is nothing but six and we are getting this sum from this sub array which is four minus one two and one and we are able to solve this question in the time complexity of big op n as we are iterating over our current array so let's try to see the pseudocode for this approach so as we are iterating over array so we'll require a for loop so for int i equal to zero till my i is less than n and i'll keep on incrementing i so we'll require two variables the current sum which will be initially equal to zero and max sum which will be initially equal to the minimum number which is nothing but equals to int min so now we'll add our current element into our current sum variable so current sum plus equals to nums of i so we'll check if our current sum if it is negative if our current sum is negative so then we'll reinitialize it to zero so if current sum if it is less than zero then we'll reinitialize current sum to zero so current sum equal to zero and then we'll check if our current sum if it is greater than our max sum if it is greater than our max sum then we'll reinitialize our max sum to current sum so our max sum will be maximum of our current sum and max sum so at the end of the iteration our maximum variable will be containing the maximum sum of the sub array and we'll simply return it so let's try to analyze the time complexity and space complexity for this approach so as you can see we are just iterating over our array so our time complexity in this case will be big of n and as we are not using any extra space to solve this question so our space complexity will be big of one so that was it about the optimal solution in which we solve this question using cadence algorithm so let's try to code this up so to start with we'll require two variable so in current sum which will be initially equal to zero and one will be max sum which will be holding the maximum sum of the sub array till now so it will be initialized to the minimum value so it will be initialized to int min now we need to iterate over our array so for int i equal to zero till my i is less than my size of the array and i'll keep on incrementing my i now we'll add our current element into our current sum so current sum plus equals to arr of i so now we need to check if our current sum if it is greater than our maximum so if our current sum if it is greater than the maximum then we'll reinitialize maximum to current sum and then after that we need to check if our current sum if it is less than zero if it is then we'll reinitialize it to zero so if our current sum if it is less than zero then we'll reinitialize current sum to zero and at the end of the iteration our max sum will be containing maximum sum of the sub array so we'll simply return our max sum as our answer so let's try to run this on sample test cases
So as you can see, it has successfully passed the sample test cases. So let's now try submitting this. So it has successfully passed all the test cases and indeed we have solved this question.